Hello and welcome to this benchmarking video at Core Electronics. My name's Clinton and I'm going to be um, walking you through the new Raspberry Pi 3 Model A+. We're going to compare it to the, um, the old Raspberry Pi Model 1 A+, and to the Raspberry Pi 3 B+. Um, the thing that really surprised me about this is not how much better it is than the A+, but how well it compares to the um, 3 B+. So let's get started and have a look at the um, obvious hardware changes that have been made. Now we're going to compare the hardware um, between the old Raspberry Pi Model A Plus and the new Raspberry Pi 3 A Plus. The first thing you're going to notice is the change of processor chip. Um, they've upgraded from a 700 megahertz chip to the new 1.4 megahertz chip, which is the same chip that they use on the Model 3B+. Um, they've also added Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity, um, which will be really handy when you want to get connected to the internet. Other than that, most of the hardware, most of the changes will affect how the how the Raspberry Pi works. Um, they still have the same form factor, so it'll plug straight into your old A+ um, projects and the holes also match up with the B+, so you can even swap it out there. The first thing that we're going to look at in terms of benchmarking is how much power do these use under certain conditions. So let's jump into that. Looked at it under three separate conditions. So first we looked at how, um, how much power it uses while it's booting, how much power while it's idle, and how much power it uses under full load. Having a look at the data, we can see that the Raspberry Pi 1 Model A+, is still using the least power. It's worth noting that it is significantly less powerful in terms of processing power. But what we have noticed is that the idle power has still remained fairly close. So um, the original model at one idle power was at 20 milliamps. The new model 3 A plus idle is at 28 milliamps. The model B plus, it idles at almost twice that. Um, so it's still the um, still one of the best for power economy that is available. Um, under boot conditions, um, the Model A Plus is significantly more um, current draw than the um, original, but only for a very short period of time. Finally, under high load. So this is when we were pushing it to the limit with the benchmarking, running all the cores at 100%. The model A plus still performs as well as the B um, plus, though seems to use less power to do so, which is quite cool. If we can see here, um, under high load, the model 3B plus is using quite a bit more power. Um, so the next the next set of um, tests that we looked at were how um, how long it took to perform certain tasks, such as booting and calculating prime numbers. So let's have a look at that. The benchmarking tools that we're going to use are Sysbench, which you can get through um, sudo apt-get, just type sudo apt-get install Sysbench, and Roy Longbottom's benchmarking toolkit for Raspberry Pi. The um, links to that are in the um, article above. The tests that we ran first are boot time and calculating prime numbers. So we'll have a look at the results. So here we have um, my graph of the results. So the first one we'll look at is boot time over here. So the Model A+, plus, um, which because I haven't used a Model A in quite a while, it was obvious that this was quite slow. So 54 seconds to boot um, as compared to um, under, like under 20 seconds. So 15 and 17 seconds for the B+, plus and 17 seconds for the Model A+. Plus. So a lot, of, a lot of improvements have been made there, and so that's, that's quite good, and you'll notice that when you're resetting the Raspberry Pi a lot. The second benchmark that we had a look at is um, calculating up to the first 10,000 prime numbers. So calculating primes is a fairly standard um, benchmark for computer performance, um, and we just kind of see how long it takes. So the Model A+, was able to calculate the first 10,000 primes in 345 seconds. Um, when we put this, so this first column here, we're using just a single core of the four cores. Um, so the Model A+, the Model 3A+, 
it was able to do it in 120 seconds, which is already a massive improvement, but we're only using one quarter of the power that we have. Um, and the B plus was able to do it in 119 seconds. Um, again, using just a single core. So the next time we ran this, this um, calculation for the first 10,000 prime numbers, we used all four cores. Um, we also ran it on the A+, though because it's only a single core processor, we get pretty much exactly the same time, um, with a little bit extra because of the overhead of paralleling. The two Raspberry Pi 3s have done phenomenally well in here, and that's because it's got all four cores working on this problem, and so we're down to about 30 seconds, which is quite good. The next set of tests that we're gonna look at is how many operations these can perform and how much memory they can move around each second. So these are some cool tests and these are mostly the Roy Longbottom tests. So let's get on to that. To get the number of operations that can be performed per second, we're gonna use three benchmarks. Drystone, which tests integer calculations, Linpack, which tests floating point calculations, and also Sysbench, um, it's memory functions. So that'll say how much memory we can move around. The first one we'll look at is Drystone, the integer calculations. So if we have a look here, we can see that the Raspberry Pi Model A can do 776 integer calculations per second. Having comparing that to the Model A+, um, Raspberry Pi 3 A+, we're getting more than 2,000 extra calculations per second, um, which is quite phenomenal. The Model 3 B+, seems to come on a little bit low, though I didn't get a chance to rerun these, and these are some from Josh's results previously, so I don't know that this graph may change um, by the time you see the by the time you're looking at this. Either way, this is a significant increase and the Model A plus is really doing well to compete even with the Model B. Um, so the next one we did was single precision floating point calculations. So using Linpack, single precision is how accurate the numbers stored are. Double precision is much more accurate, but takes more computing power. Looking at this, um, we can see that the A plus was able to do 51 of these calculations per second. The newer ones, the R3 um, variants, are able to do around 200 calculations per second, which is more than four times what the um, A plus is able to do. What's kind of interesting is when we move to double precision, the Raspberry Pi A seemed to take quite a hit to actually get the extra precision, whereas the newer A plus and B plus are able to do the same calculations in this almost the same number of calculations within the second, which is a testament to the kind of the improvements in the processor and how, how well it's able to do those. One of the really surprising things to me when I was doing this was this next section, which um, is the memory um, usage. The old A plus memory um, was able to do 288 megabytes per second. Comparing that to the new R3 variants, both of which are able to perform at well over 2,000 megabits per, megabytes per second, um, which is, you're going to notice that. That'll be where that speed up in boot time and uh, it just makes it so much nicer to use having that memory throughput. That's all the benchmarks we've run. I think this, is, this has been quite interesting. Um, I was, I was expecting it to be a lot better than the A+. What I wasn't expecting was how well it contends against the B+. Um, I think I think the A plus is going to be a really good option for the Raspberry Pi moving forward as I'm excited to see what people can do with it. Um, so if you have any ideas and want to share those or any questions about anything we've done or benchmarking in general, um, post those in the um, forum thread below 